Yeah. Simon, guess what? What? You know what today is? Yeah. What? Thanksgiving! Thanksgiving! What? There we go. Now he yelled with the microphone further away. What's happening? Nothing. You really. ready for a lot of turkey today? Yeah. There's a lot of really cool things that happen Actually, on Thanksgiving. Actually, not really. I'm already... <laughs> not really. Oh, we're missing something. Where's the Cowboys hat? Since the Cowboys always play on Thanksgiving. I don't know. Mm. All right, so today is Thanksgiving. It's November 23rd, 2017. And it's Thanksgiving. What? What, what? So we're going to do a couple of normal facts, then we're going to do a whole bunch of uh, Thanksgiving football facts for you. We're going to try and run through them pretty quickly. Yeah, because we got a lot of them, and we were trying to make this video short. That's right. So we're going to start in 1943. The Philadelphia Phillies. We like them, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Guess what happened to their owner? William D. Cox is permanently banned from baseball. You know why? Uh, for having a bet on his own team. Yeah, because he was betting on his own team. If you're not going to bet on your own team, who who are you going to bet on? That's my question. On uh, the other team? No, you never want to bet on the other team. Why not? Because then you're trying to make it so that your team loses so that you win your bet. But he's but betting on his own team, so he wants his team to win. So, boom, he should have uh, been, if he's going to bet, bet on your own team. But why did he get banned from it? Well, he's not allowed to bet in baseball. Nope. That doesn't make sense. Well, it's not allowed. All right, and uh, did you know that from 1941 to 1944, there were absolutely no football games on Thanksgiving? Due to World War II. Yep, due to World War II. Very good, Cameron. The All-American Football Conference, the AAFC, also played Thanksgiving games from 1946 to 1949. That's a lot. Do you know any teams in the All-American Football Conference? Uh, uh, Phillies? I have no idea. So that's going to be our... Question of the day! Question of the day! Name a team that was in the All-American Football Conference, the I AAFC. Guess. What's your guess? Uh, my guess is that there's going to be a team from New York in there. My guess is there's going to be a team from Philadelphia. You think a team from Philadelphia. All right, so there's our guesses. You f tell us who was actually in the All-American Football Conference. Uh, just comment down below. Oh, yep, comment down below. Oh, we didn't even get into all that good stuff. While we're talking about that, follow us, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. Twitter and Snapchat at View From The Yard. Facebook, Facebook is View Yard. View Yard, that's right. Go to Woodrow Sandwich Shop, but not today. They're closed. Yeah. On South Street, get yourself a nice, delicious sandwich. So get it tomorrow. Get it tomorrow. Black Friday, you're going to be down in the city in yeah. Philadelphia. Down by South Street, stop in Woodrow's, ask for Kevin, tell Kevin Robin Cameron sent you from yep. a view from the yard. He's going to have no clue what that means. He, he yes. will. He knows. He does? He does. He now knows that we're giving him free publicity. <laughs> yes. That he's, it's not free anymore. Well, well it is still free. It's but. still free. He's not paying us for it. This is but he weird. knows. So if you go in and mention us, he'll know what you're talking about. Yeah, finally. That's right. <laughs> finally. Uh, okay, did we get rid of all the important things? Yep. I think so. Do they know that we're watching This Day in Sports? Mm -hmm. They do now. This Day in Sports. Sports, 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 sports. We're skipping everything We're skipping today. everything. We're going all over the place. All right. In 1982, the New York Islanders and the Minnesota North Stars played to an 8-8 eight -eight tie. They scored a lot of goals for hockey. Nobody scores that much. They scored 16 goals. It was almost wow. like an all-star game. And then in 1988, the great one. Do you know who the great one is? Uh... Nope. The greatest hockey player of all time? Nope. Nope, still no. Wayne Gretzky scored his 600th NHL goal today in 1988. That's a lot of goals. He didn't score them all in one game, though. Wait, so he scored his... So today he scored his 600th one? Or, like, a years ago he scored his 600th one? Today, today, in 1988, oh. he scored his 600th goal. He didn't score 600 today. That would be a lot of goals in one day. Yeah. Could you imagine how long that game would be? I know. If he kept scoring 600 goals, it would be a long time. Unless he had the, he, unless he just kept on going, he went hit, and then the thing, but the goalie would just hit it right out, and he would just hit it right back. Hit in. it right back in again. Yeah, that, that would be a good way to that score. That would have been a quicker way. Yes. But, but no, this was over his whole career, 600 goals. All right, so now let's talk about some NFL, some football facts for you for today, Thanksgiving because there's three games on today. Detroit Lions always host 
Dallas Cowboys always host. And then there's a third game on today as well. We're going to start in 1962. The Lions handed the 10-0 Green Bay Packers their only defeat of the season on Thanksgiving in 1962. They got some Thanksgiving luck. That's That they sure did. Probably ate a lot of turkey and that's how they did it. Probably. That would definitely do it. In 1980, the Lions and the Bears were tied at 17 apiece at the end of regulation. The game went to overtime. This was the first Thanksgiving to go into overtime. That's 34 goals in one game. Yes, 34 points in one game. Very good. Well, um, I don't know why I say... I, we well, we were goal. talking about hockey. Hockey was goals. Yeah. Football's points. Uh, this is the first over overtime game, also at the Silverdome. Bears running back Dave Williams returned the uh, overtime kickoff, opening kickoff, 95 yards for a game-winning touchdown, wow. ending the shortest overtime game in NFL history. Hmm. I've never known that before. No, me neither. So it was the first overtime game in. On Thanksgiving, and it was the fastest overtime game. Yeah. In 1989, the Bounty Ball. All of you Philadelphia Eagles fans know all about this because your coach, Buddy Ryan, put a bounty on the Dallas Cowboy football players. The Eagles easily beat up on the Cowboys 27 to nothing, uh, and at which time the Cowboys coach, Jimmy Johnson, accused Buddy Ryan of placing bounties specifically on the kicker. Uh, thus, becoming the first of a string of three bitterly contested games between the two teams. The next game they played was called Bounty Ball 2, and then the game after that in the following year they called it the Pork Chop Bowl. <laughs> yeah, big rivalry there between the Cowboys and the Eagles. Oh, in 1994... Troy Aikman, who had a birthday just a few days ago, was injured, and third-string quarterback Jason Garrett was uh, forced to start for the Cowboys against the Green Bay Packers. The Cowboys won that game, what, what, 42-31. to Jason Garrett, you know who he is now? He now coaches the Dallas Cowboys. That was 73 points. 73 points they in scored. In one game. In one game. There was a lot of scoring. Was that a long game? No, normal normal length of a game, but just a lot of scoring going on. Oh, wow. In 1998, in another controversial Thanksgiving day game, the Steelers and the Lions went to overtime tied at 16 apiece. Jerome Bettis called the coin toss in the air, but head referee Phil Luckett awarded Detroit the ball after Bettis tried to call both heads and tails at the same time. The Lions went on to a to kick a field goal on the first possession and win the game, uh, winning 19-16. As a result of the fiasco, team captains are now required to call the coin toss before the coin is tossed, and a later rule change now prevents teams from automatically winning the game by scoring a field goal on the first possession. This day also saw a memorable per performance by Minnesota by the Minnesota Vikings in a 46 to 36 win over the Dallas Cowboys as Vikings rookie Randy Moss caught three touchdowns all of over 50 yards. Uh, they didn't score by much. They scored by 10 more points. That's not right. that much. No, that's not too much. But it was a lot of points that they scored. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, I know all of you are wondering, what are the team's overall records on Thanksgiving? Is that what you're wondering, Cameron? No. No, you weren't wondering that? No. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. The Cowboys' overall record on Thanksgiving leading up to today, 30 wins, 18 losses, and one tie. The Detroit Lions, who also play every Thanksgiving, are 37, 38, and 2. And then the next two teams with the most uh, games played are the Bears and the Packers. I have a feeling they played the Lions a lot on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, the Bears' record is 17, 15, and 2, and the Packers are 14, 20, and 2. <laughs> they lost a lot of games. They sure did. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Cincinnati Bengals are the only two teams who have the two teams that have only played once on Thanksgiving and they've lost both of those and the Cleveland Browns are 0 and 3 on Thanksgiving. So there we go. That's all those fun facts for you and now it's time for the birthdays. All right, and now we're on to the birthdays. What what? What what? So if today is your birthday, we say happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. You share your birthday with these following people. That's right. Go ahead. In 1970, Glenn Murray. He was Murray. <laughs> Murray. <laughs> Why did I say Murray? I have no idea, but that's okay. He was an outfit 
outfielder for the Philadelphia Phillies. He sure was. And in 1971, Vin Baker for the NBA forward. He was an NBA forward, yes. What does that mean? He won the position on the field, the oh, uh, forward, okay. guards. And he was also, a forward. Also in 1971, Jim Payne. Pine. Pine. What? Mm, it's okay. I can't speak today, guys. That's no, all right. It's only Thanksgiving. Cameron had too much turkey already. I haven't even eaten any turkey yet. Oh. I've had too much to eat, though. Too much to eat, though. I hear you. Go ahead. Jim Pine, NFL guard. And in 1977, Adam Eaton. He's and... a baseball player. Yeah. Um, yep. would you like to and last but not least, 1980, Jonathan Papelbon. He's a closer for the Red Sox and for the Phillies. And then maybe they moved on after that. I forget where he went after the Phillies. But all of them... Five birthdays for you on this star-studded Thanksgiving football edition of This Day in Sports. Can I just point something out? Yes, Today's please. Today's opposite day for our video because we have five birthdays and then a bunch of facts. As so, opposed to five facts and a, and bunch, a bunch of, of birthdays. birthdays. You got it. All right, so from Cameron, I'm Rob. Trey was here, he left, but he'll be back. He's cameraman. He's cameraman. And all of us here, we wish, want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving from us We're to you. We're very grateful for you. We are very thankful for you. So please follow us and do all that good stuff, especially today on Thanksgiving, so we can give extra thanks to you. So thank you very much, and we will see you again tomorrow. Peace! Peace.